This video is the first of three uh, videos on the effective use of multimedia to promote learning. Um, in these videos, we're going to be covering the principles of knowledge construction and cognitive processing. In the second video, um, I will be covering the cognitive theory of multimedia use. And in the third video, um, we'll be going over how this is applied to constructing PowerPoint presentations and uh, multimedia presentations, such as uh, videos used for distance learning. Um, let's first look at a couple of principles of learning and instruction. Um, learning is essentially taking a new experience and integrating it with prior knowledge to create new knowledge or a change in knowledge. Um, in instruction, the teacher is coming in and is artificially manipulating a learning experience um, to create a desired, hopefully, new knowledge. Um, so the idea is, is that you're going to kind of come in and you're going to do something to this learning experience that's going to result in a more or less effective uh, learning experience and a change in knowledge. Um, there are a couple of different ways of looking at learning. Um, an older version of understanding learning was what was called the information delivery model. Um, and underlying this model is the idea that the mind is kind of um, empty and that the teacher is coming along and imparting new knowledge. So this is more of a passive, a receiving type of um, method of understanding learning. And this is what people think of when they're thinking of someone standing at the front of the classroom and doing a didactic lecture. The teacher's just standing up there talking, the students are writing things down, and they're receiving this information. Um, we're using a different um, model here, and this is called the knowledge construction model. And the underlying assumption with this model is that cognitive processing is active as opposed to passive. And that what you're doing in um, creating new knowledge is that you're selecting certain ideas, thoughts, images, and you're organizing them into some sort of a logical structure in your active or your working memory. These are then being integrated with your prior knowledge to create new knowledge. So this is an active process. Um, in order to kind of understand um, this process with regards to multimedia use, it's helpful to look at three principles of cognitive processing. Um, the first principle is the idea that you're going to be using dual channels to take in information. Um, the second principle is what's called limited capacity, and the idea behind this is that humans really only have the ability in their active and working memory to work with and process a few ideas at any given moment. Um, and we'll be going into these in more detail in a minute. Um, the third idea is what's called active processing, which we just briefly reviewed. Um, so let's take a look at dual channels. In dual channels, particularly with using multimedia such as PowerPoint presentations, distance videos, etc., you're working with um, two kind of processing systems. The first of these systems is going to be your visual or your pictorial system. And, and so this is what you're taking in through your eyes. These are the graphics, the images, uh, the videos and the printed text that you see on a screen. So those words that you see right there on the screen dual channels, visual, pictorial, are being taken in through your visual system. The second um, channel that you're using right now is the auditory system, and that's what you're listening to. It's the sound of my voice, it's the words that you're hearing. Um, these two channels are going to be the primary means of taking in data in any form of multimedia learning, particularly with distance learning. The second principle is limited capacity. Limited capacity is the idea that you can work with a few things at any given time and that if you exceed that capacity, um, you're going to overload people's brains. So you're going to actually make their learning experience less effective if you give them too many things to work with at any given time. Um, I think you've all been there for the PowerPoint presentation where someone has been talking and has had images on the screen as well as text on the screen at the same time and you really can't absorb or follow everything that's going on and it can be a very frustrating experience. Um, this next video is a very nice um, display of cognitive overloading through the use of multimedia.
Welcome. Welcome to today. Today is now, and now you are part of something new. Welcome to Sensory Overload. This project has been developed to test the Homo sapiens attention span through audio and visual stimulation. Throughout this exercise, the viewer will be exposed to changes in voice, color, and tone, as well as other visual effects to try to break the viewer's concentration. Feel free to choose any of the given elements and to change to a new element at any given point. Enjoy, and welcome to Century Overload. Concentrate on the sound of my voice. Do not pay attention to anything but my voice. My voice is important. It's what you are listening to. Can you hear my voice? Three, two. Concentrate on the sound of my voice. Do you not have pay attention to, to anything, anything but my voice. I am your my voice. voice is important. Do not pay attention to anything but me. I am your voice. You need to focus more. Why are you not focusing? Why can't you drown the mouth? Three, two. Concentrate on the sound of my voice. Do not pay attention to anything about my voice. There is nothing else to do with this. This is what you are listening to. I am your focus. Can you hear my voice? Concentrate on the sound of my voice. Don't pay attention to anything but my voice. My voice is what I hear. That is what you are listening to. Do not pay attention to anything about my voice. Do not pay attention to anything about my voice. You need to focus on it. Why are you not focusing? So this is the, um, as most of you are recovering from that glassy-eyed feel from being overloaded by that nice video, I, I don't think many of us uh, actually go that far, but we um, do unconsciously sometimes overload our audience. Um, and this video hopefully is going to um, help us learn how not to do that and to teach more effectively. Um, coming back to the third principle, which is the act of processing, I'm just going to briefly review that once again we select certain ideas, um, we organize them, and then we integrate them with prior knowledge. Um, and these are the, the principles that we're reviewing here. Um, so once again, dual channels, eyes and ears, limited capacity, if you put too many ideas in at the same time, um, people aren't going to be able to cope with it, they're going to get glassy-eyed, they're going to miss important pieces of information, and active processing. 